Gigantic mountains, vast salt flats, an impenetrable jungle world, the South American continent impressively demonstrates the natural beauty of our planet. With an area of almost 17.8 million square kilometers, the landmass is home to almost 430 million people living in 13 different countries. Today, however, we'd like to leave the world-famous sites of South America aside and instead take a look at the equally fascinating and mysterious discoveries that have been made on the world's fourth largest continent. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more great videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most shocking discoveries in South America that scientists couldn't believe. Monteverde When did humans really begin to colonize the South American continent? To get closer to the answer to this exciting question, it's worth taking a look at the archaeological excavation site of Monteverde in Chile. In fact, it's one of the few open-air prehistoric sites in South America. Shortly after humans settled in the area, the river there dried up, leaving a bog that perfectly preserved the organic structures for posterity. As part of their work, the scientists came to the conclusion that between 20 and 30 people once lived here, and that about 12 to 14,000 years ago. Other traces, albeit unsecured, even show an age of 30,000 years. Already, the secured finds turned the common view of history completely upside down. Until now, it was assumed that the Paleo-Indians had only settled America 3,000 years later. Near the creek, the earliest known settlers set up a kind of tent which was divided into individual living quarters, with each living quarter having its own fireplace. Outside this shelter, covered with animal skins, residents made tools and art objects. The discovered remains of edible plants, which came from distances of up to 250 kilometers, suggest that the people of the time lived as hunters and gatherers and made regular long forays into the surrounding countryside. Sechin Bajo The world-famous Pyramids of Giza are around 4,500 years old. However, when the mighty monuments of the ancient Egyptians were completed, the Great Pyramid at Sechimbajo had been standing for around 700 years. The remains of the originally 70 to 100 meter high structure were uncovered in 2005. But the excavation site in western Peru also gives us a deep insight into the living environment of the fascinating Norte Chico culture. The beginnings of this South American Stone Age culture go back to the year 9000 BC, and the people then experienced their heyday between the years 3500 and 1800 BC. We now know that the construction of the Sechimbajo place of worship probably heralded the beginning of this cultural marriage. If we now travel about 200 kilometers to the south, we'll find the archaeological site of Corral. Located in the Rio Supe River Valley, the rediscovered ruins embody the oldest known city on the continent. In detail, about 1,000 permanent residents lived here between the years 2600 and 2000 BC. Here, too, the Norte Chico created some pyramids, but with a height of around 18 meters, they were significantly smaller than their imposing counterpart in Sechin Bajo. Antique paws Precious jewelry, valuable swords, mythical figures. It's long been known that people of the past placed a wide variety of grave goods with their deceased. However, archaeologists in Peru were recently able to see with their own eyes how unusual the death cult of our ancestors could actually be. In the tomb of an aristocrat, the researchers came across a pair of metallic paws reminiscent of the razor-sharp claws of a big cat. According to the experts, there's no question that the objects were actually made for combat. As if that weren't enough, researchers believe the paws were once part of a full-body costume made of animal skin. It's very likely that the disguised warriors competed against each other in ritual duels. The winner then received the paws of his opponent as a trophy, while the loser was sacrificed to the gods. The first investigations indicate that the burial objects are more than 1,500 years old. 
At that time, the moche culture was based on the north coast of Peru before it mysteriously disappeared from the scene in the 8th century. Prehistoric Giants Meet the Argentinosaurus, or in other words, one of the mightiest land animals that ever walked our globe. Up to 30 meters long and weighing more than 70 tons, the long-necked herbivore easily overshadowed all other primeval lizards. The few bones that we know so far from Argentinosaurus were to be found in Argentina in the late 1980s, hence the official name. When it comes to the question of the greatest carnivore of all time, there's no avoiding the Gigantosaurus. The corresponding fossils were also discovered in Argentina. The researcher's reconstruction revealed that Gigantosaurus grew up to 13 meters long and weighed 7 tons. Despite its sheer mass, the beast reached an impressive speed of 50 kilometers per hour. In order to provide itself with the necessary energy, it had to devour 20 kilograms of meat every day. This corresponds to four times the requirement of a full-grown tiger. Animal Mass Parades it doesn't matter whether it's cats, dogs, tapers, or peccaries. Many animals that are typical of South America today actually come from the North American continent. However, this also applies to the reverse case. The roots of armadillos and opossums actually lie much further south. Accordingly, the so-called Great American Fauna Exchange took place 2.8 to 2.7 million years ago, during which countless creatures moved to a new home. But what was the background to these animals' mass moves? Since South America began to separate from the rest of the world's land masses around 100 million years ago, the fauna there developed completely completely independently over millions of years. Few life forms were then able to leave their isolated homes. Around 2.76 million years ago, the truncated continent finally got a connection in the form of a stable land bridge to North America. From then on, countless animals began to use the newly created land bridge in both directions. As a result, some animal species disappeared from South America, and the niches that were freed up were occupied by immigrant animals. In addition to the animal forms already presented, the new South American settlers also included bears deer, horses, martens, and rabbits. In return, North and Central America welcomed giant sloths, anteaters, capybaras, and the so-called terror bird Titanus. Vilcabamba in 1536, the Inca ruler, Manco Carac II, appointed by Francisco Pizarro, turned against the Spanish foreign rulers. Although the indigenous ruler had tens of thousands of soldiers around him, he was unable to recapture the capital, Cusco. After the siege failed, the Inca ruler had no choice but to retreat to Vilcabamba with his warriors. In retrospect, Vilcabamba is considered the last retreat of the once powerful Inca Empire. In the years that followed, the indigenous peoples put up fierce resistance against the Spaniards from here. After Manco Carac II was killed by seven traitors in 1544, his sons managed to preserve Vilcabamba's independence through skillful negotiations. In 1572, however, it became apparent that the Incas would not be able to withstand the Spaniards much longer, after which the indigenous inhabitants burned down their own city. In the centuries that followed, knowledge of the last Inca bastion was lost. All attempts to find Vilcabamba came to nothing. The ruins could only be rediscovered in the 1960s with the help of American aerial photographs. Since then, more and more relics of this fascinating people have come back to light. These include, for example, the alleged ruler's palace, astonishingly well-preserved buildings, and an important sanctuary that bears the name the White Stone. San Jose as part of the Spanish Silver Fleet, the San Jose repeatedly transported tons of valuable raw materials home from the South American colonies. 
The galleon, completed in 1696, was armed with more than 60 powerful cannons to protect the glittering cargo. Before the ship set sail for the very last time, it was once again richly loaded in Panama in May 1708. More than 340 tons of gold and silver coins and 116 boxes filled with emeralds were to start a long journey home. That these crossings were anything but harmless becomes clear when we remember that Great Britain and Spain had been in the so-called War of the Spanish Succession since 1701. So it was that the Silver Fleet was intercepted by four British warships about 30 kilometers from the Colombian port of Cartagena. The fierce battle lasted almost 10 hours. Finally, the San Jose caught fire and sank in the depths of the sea as a result of a powdered chamber explosion. More than 570 people died, only 11 survived. The value of the sunken cargo is estimated at several billion euros, which makes it all the more understandable that many treasure hunters have striven over time to find the San Jose again. However, it would take until 2015 before Colombia's president, Juan Manuel Santos, announced the world sensation. A team of international experts had finally managed to track down the shipwreck near the Baru Peninsula. However, the breathtaking find is overshadowed by some disputes. The question of who owns the San Jose is always the focus of heated debates. According to a UNESCO convention, the ship and its cargo belong to the country of origin, Spain. The problem? Colombia has never signed the relevant convention. The indigenous ethnic group Cara Cara from Bolivia also throws its hat in the ring on this issue. Their ancestors were forced into forced labor by the Spaniards in the 16th century. A few weeks ago, two more wrecks from the same era were discovered near the San Jose. It'll be interesting to see how the parties will ultimately come to an agreement. Maricoxi the explorer Percy Fawcett led a truly exciting life. After the Briton had initially served as a soldier, he then learned the trade of land surveying. As a result, Fawcett was sent to South America several times by the government to map one of the last undeveloped areas on Earth. While the explorer was completing his official assignments, he learned about an ancient legend that from then on fascinated him more and more, the myth of the sunken city of Z. Some clues suggest that at some point, Fawcett devoted himself exclusively to the search for the lost city. Whether he actually managed to discover the legendary ruins in the heart of the Brazilian jungle is uncertain. Percy Fawcett disappeared without a trace in the summer of 1925 and was never seen again. It's believed that the adventurer was killed along with his son by an indigenous tribe. Others, however, believe that the father-son duo was accepted into the ranks of the tribe and lived in the jungle for the rest of their lives. During his expeditions into the rainforest, the Brit also kept hearing rumors about a grotesque people. This is how the Maksubi Indians told of the so-called Maricoxes. It would be a group of hairy creatures whose members would eat each other over and over again. If a human falls into the clutches of the Maricoxi, they are roasted on a spit over an open fire before the flesh is ripped from the bones. On a later trip, Fawcett again learned of strange monkey people who lived in burrows. In this case, too, it was said that the tribe members were covered in dark fur and went hunting during the night. It's said that these beings had such a good sense of smell that they were said to have a sixth sense. Later, the adventurer is said to have even met the Maricoxi in person. So, after a few days in the jungle, Fawcett and his companions found themselves on a native trail. As the men debated whether to continue down this path, they suddenly saw two figures in the distance. A closer look revealed the unusual appearance of the two strangers. Fawcett later stated that they were unusually tall, hairy men. They also had extraordinarily long arms and a grotesquely distorted forehead. Shortly thereafter, the two strangers turned and retreated into the undergrowth. All right, folks, now it's your turn. Which discovery from South America did you find most exciting? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Are you interested in more exciting videos about the most exciting archaeological finds? Finally, 
please take a look at the other posts on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the credits. Thank you for watching. Have a great one and see you next time.